Okay, so good morning everybody and welcome to our talk on building information modelling, or BIM as it's often referred to. Now, the reason I wanted to talk to you this morning is because building information modelling is the most exciting and challenging thing to ever happen to the construction industry. And it actually involves absolutely everybody who's got any association with buildings at all. What I'm going to do today is just give you a bit of an overview about what building information modelling actually is and then start to set out some of the key benefits for you as clients. Now, before I start to do that, I just want to get a bit of a general idea because we've got a, a varied range of people from different areas. So, mind a bit of participation. Just want a few show of hands. Have we got any landlords or building managers here today? Yeah, okay, great stuff. Any manufacturers, perhaps? Yeah, quite a few. Okay, anyone involved with ever perhaps commissioning new buildings or extending existing buildings? Yeah, okay. So, we've got quite a varied range of people already. I want you to do something for me. I want you to imagine a future where you could work with your architect in real time on a project without the need for any printed drawings anymore. Imagine you could be stood in the corridor of your building and you could walk down, open up into a room, see the lighting effects through the day as the sun passes through the sky, but before your building's even been built. Imagine you could work on a project with absolute confidence that it was going to be delivered on time, on budget, and that your building at the end would give you greater productivity and run at lower costs, yeah, and that you could manage that building with all the information you ever wanted at your fingertips. People seem to think that building information modelling is actually a new term, yeah, but building information modelling has been going on for an extremely long time. Right back in 2011, in fact, the government stated that by 2016, all government-funded projects would be done using a BIM process. And this came into effect actually in April of this year. They basically stated if you want to be involved on a government funded project, whether it be a school, hospital, or right down to social housing even, you've got to be using, and your architect will have to be using, a BIM process to produce that information. Now their drivers are the same as everybody else's from a client perspective. Reduce cost and increase efficiency. Yeah, it's the same thing we all want. They actually stated that by you using BIM processes, they can reduce their capital costs on projects by 20%. Yeah. Now, these are big reductions, which means we need big change. See, building information modelling isn't just simply about a change to the design process. It actually goes right through from design into construction, but way through into actually the operation and management of a building as well. Okay, and this is what I want to start to show you. So I've identified a few of the key benefits that it can start to provide to you. Okay, the first is the ability for enhanced decision making. The next, we'll be looking at reducing project costs, and then we'll be looking at more efficient operation and management of your building assets. So let's take a look at the first of these benefits that BIM can start to offer you. So as clients or building managers, manufacturers, etc., we know we've got here, you have a lot of decisions to make. Yeah? And these decisions will have major implications. If you were given better quality information at the start of a project about your building, perhaps before it was constructed, then you'd be able to make more informed choices about that building structure. By creating a digital 3D model of a potential building, you're able to really see a building in context you can see roads, you can see parking, or you could if this wasn't quite so dark in here. Yeah, parking and planting and lighting and everything associated with the surroundings of a building to really start to remove any uncertainty you might actually have about that project. And the example you actually see here for one of our clients, the planning submission itself even led to some further advertisement about the building. Yeah, and actually had a story around it, just purely taken from the image submitted as part of the planning process. Yeah, so, so it put their minds at rest, it put the planners' minds at rest. For existing buildings as well, which are being extended, it can provide you with a much needed clarity about how your existing building will actually interact with your new building. The image I've actually shown here is a project about to start on site actually next week for a company called Yummy Yorkshire in um, Upper Denbury. Some of you might know it, it's a cracking place for an ice cream if you want. And basically, they were really interested to know how their existing building, you can see to the side here, was going to interact with our new proposed extension to extend their ice cream parlour. They really appreciated the 3D model because we could sit down with them and go through it and really understand how the two things would merge together 
and it also helped them input with us as to what they actually wanted back from the building. See, with a 3D model, we're able to give you so much more information, yeah, even just visually, going from more traditional 2D drawings and plans to be able to give you actual 3D versions of the floor plans themselves. It gives you much better appreciation of shape and space and the items that actually go into that building and how you can start to use those. But we can take it further again. For rooms maybe where you're wanting to focus on key areas, we can stand you right inside there and you can say, right, I want to look at that feature, that fireplace or that window and you can stand and actually see it. Yeah, we can do this for anything. It's just as relevant for the small projects like a domestic extension I've shown here as it is for your major developments, you know, with the ability to understand the building. Now, one of the great things is that if your architects and designers are using building information modelling, then actually you as clients can use free software to view and actually start to interact with your models as well before the building's created. So for a start, rather than just issuing standard 2D drawing information, which I'm sure you'll have all seen before, maybe if you want to start to make changes, getting the red pen out, marking things up, scanning it in, then trying to email it back. Well, surely there's a more efficient way. For information we actually produce from a building information modelling, yes, we can still give you a sort of 2D drawing, but it's an intelligent 2D drawing. It's an electronic 2D drawing, which you can start to mark up electronically using free software. So, for example, here's the 2D drawing sent out, created from a 3D model. Using very simple tools, you can start to mark up, saying, OK, maybe we want to look at amending this particular feature. But because it was created from a 3D model, it's got intelligence behind the whole thing. So aside from that, I can start to select objects within it. So I can select this window and start to actually get key data about the actual object as well. Yeah, and we can do this for anything, walls, windows, anything within that 2D drawing. You can still select and get the information. And at the end of it all, you can save it and simply send it back to us. And we can pull your marked up information back into our live working drawings to start to implement those changes. So you are fully involved in the whole design process with us. Taking it further, again, yeah, you can actually be interacting with an actual 3D model, again using free software, because we create the model for you, and you can start to interact with it. So again, I just want to show you how this can work. So you can start to view the 3D model, creating views for it that we would have done before, we can start to say, okay, you can isolate the views. You can just look at the structure, or you can just look at the mechanical things. So maybe you just want to look at the toilets within your building. Or you can start to walk around it. You can truly interact with this building. It was a bit overkill. I had a hard hat worker in there. I'm just going to change it out for perhaps someone in an office thing just to wander around this supermarket for you. But like I said, using extremely easy navigational tools, you know, we can just simply start to walk around. So walking between the aisles of this supermarket. And you can start to see and appreciate the size and shape and space. I'm just going to turn left at the end of here and start to look around. So you'll see very simple navigation tools, very few to choose on the far side there. So walking, viewing, looking, selecting, and starting to get the information about all of this from our building. So obviously there are serious benefits to this. But I've got to admit, it's a lot of fun as well, yeah, wandering around your building. So for those who might have arrived a little bit earlier, you might have seen us playing around with these a little bit as well. Yeah. So 3D goggles. What we can actually do is utilising just simply a smartphone. So my iPhone's just put in the front of this with a 3D model of the building downloaded. And because of the way iPhones or iPads, etc., yeah, can integrate and know when you're turning left and right. So will your view of the model, if you start to look around it, if anyone wants to go at the end, you're more than welcome to come have a quick look. Yes, yeah, so again, it's a lot of fun. Okay, so this sort of mobile viewing, it makes the whole process, again, much more interactive. You can really immerse yourself in the building before it's constructed. Now, we've also found another sort of major benefit of building information modelling and producing of the information visually for clients is it helps with actually getting capital approval for projects as well, especially if you have maybe a head office that's further removed and you can't quite understand what you're wanting for your project. A client we're actually working for at the moment has their head office over in India and they always seem to struggle with this problem for getting approval for new projects. So in this particular instance, they came to us and asked for a 3D model. They said, right, we believe if we can produce this information and send it across so they can visually see it, they'll understand it and get the process to run through much quicker. And they were right, took the process down from several months to just over a week in this particular case. 
OK, so what we've covered in this first section is that we can use visual information from the 3D model to really start to give you confidence about what you're going to get from your building. And this takes me to our next section about reducing overall project costs. So how can we start to reduce project costs from our building information modelling? Well, there are lots of things that can actually start to affect a cost through the design and construction or operational phases of the building. Building information modelling allows us to actually predict and prepare for these costs, but also to help start reducing those costs. So waste. Yeah. Sadly, construction as an industry is an extremely wasteful process. This is because, obviously, the construction industry is unique. Yeah. It's not like manufacturing. We can't simply build a building and then go, oh, yes, it did or didn't work. It's too late by that point. Yeah, because every building is large and expensive and often one of a kind. If we could digitally produce the information in the first place, though, we can start to test it and check things first. Yes, yeah, so with the digital model, we really start being able to drill in and look and understand the building, and this gives us many advantages. For example, we can start to use the information then with confidence to start to produce things like off-site construction. Yeah, so items can be prefabricated off-site with confidence because we know they're already going to fit and how they'll actually start to operate. So the elements you see here, for example, this is a project that's just actually recently been completed for one of our South Yorkshire clients. You'll notice we've got a steel frame. In these elements here are what we call structurally insulated panels. These replace the more traditional masonry construction and actually help to reduce this phase of the construction project down from two and a half months to just three weeks. Yeah, significantly reducing construction time, but also significantly reducing any waste because they're prefabricated, yeah, and they're not having to cut things on site to fit. Our ability to cost and quantize things before they're constructed as well. By creating a digital 3D model of the building, we also create all the objects that go within the building as well. So I know a few people said they were manufacturers as well. So anybody involved with creating objects that go inside a building, whether it be chairs, desks, doors, windows, etc., all of those items are actually created as 3D models themselves and packed full of data. Now, just one of those pieces of data, for example, is just simply the cost. The great thing about that is it means if you start to amend or change your model, ask us to start to change, increase, etc., we can give you live updated costings of the implications of those changes. If you remove half the doors, okay, then you'll, you'll see the cost change. If you increase and add additional information in lighting, etc., you'll see the cost go up. Yes, yeah, so this interaction, you start to see the implications of cost and design changes. One of the biggest problems for constructing buildings, however, is the clashes that can happen on site. Yeah, anyone that's been involved with a construction project, I'm sure you'll be nodding along going, OK, yeah, we know exactly what you're talking about. The problem is, you see, you get multiple different designers, architects, engineers, mechanical engineers, all working on extremely complex building structures, but sharing information in two dimensions for what is clearly a 3D object. Yeah? The mistakes are inevitably going to happen and do happen. Yeah? Lack of coordination between things results in things like this. Yeah? How are they going to get through that door? Or this. Can't actually believe that happened, but it did. Yeah. How are they going to get up that escalator and actually fit under that ceiling? Or my personal favourite. Yeah. <laughs> what a solution to a problem. Yeah, just cut the air part of the door. So, okay, they might seem a little bit silly, but real problems happen like this every single time on a building project because there isn't that coordination. Now, what, yes, whilst all these issues can be resolved, yeah, they come at a cost. And I don't just mean a financial cost. Clearly, there is a time delay cost for resolving these kind of issues. But also, from our architectural perspective as well, it's a real sad cost in terms of the compromise to the building. Yeah? It's no longer the best building it can be. It's just the best fix for these problems. It's too late once this has happened. So I want you to show how we can actually start to resolve this or prevent any of this using building information modelling. So again, I just want to show you something I've created here. So this, again, is a 3D information model. What I've done is I've just turned off the architectural parts for you, just for clarity, just leaving the structural model and the mechanical model. And what we can start to do is say, right, what I want to do is I want to test this. Yeah. I want to see if any of the structural model is hitting any of the mechanical model. And if so, I can resolve it. Yep, so I'm telling you here, test all the structural framing. 
against the ductwork from the mechanical model and see if anything hits. This list here is telling me things have hit. All these things you see listed there are issues. So I can say, OK, show me. And it takes me straight to the problem. It says, right, OK, well, what you've got here is a duct passing straight through a steel beam. If this happened on site, it would ex be extremely costly to resolve. But what I can do here is say, OK, well, if I change that beam out for maybe a castellated beam, hopefully the duct will pass straight through. Yeah, and it does. We'd never leave it just there, though. Because often you'll find in construction, you fix one problem, you may create another. Yes, yeah, so it's always worth we'd retest and retest and retest, and hopefully find we've got no interferences. Yeah, if we can hit all these problems before they get to site, we're going to make considerable cost savings. So what we do with that information is we produce reports. We take images and send these out as reports, which can then go to the relevant parties. And they fix their part of the model, and we progress on. It's all about collaboration, you see, sharing of information, working together, actually, on the model. You'll notice I keep mentioning the term collaboration. Yeah. It's such a key thing for building information modelling, the ability to work together. And part of what we've obviously done here today is obviously our collaboration with Garbett and Elliott. Yeah. We're producing building information modelling, and they're able to start recouping tax for clients of ours on their buildings. Yeah. It's about the whole process. So let's look at the final section on how building information modelling can be used for more efficient building operation and management. Now, a lot of this actually ties right back again to the early stages of a design. If we could understand better the building, how it's going to be used and optimised, then we can come up with better layouts and designs, buildings that are ultimately going to work much harder for yourselves. So if it was a school, for example, it'll need to be naturally lit, well ventilated with optimum seating spaces. Yeah. If it was a production facility, we might need the best layout of the machinery. And by getting involved with yourselves and understanding how your businesses work, and then putting it together as an actual model, we can all actually integrate together to see how things are going to work out. But we can do a lot of things to do with testing the model as well. Again, how can we optimise the building from an early stage to understand how it's going to work to lower operational costs? So we're able to do things like energy analysis, even at the earliest stage of a project. We know where that building's located, yeah, and a rough size and shape and volume to do with it. We can start to run testing on it, saying, right, okay, I know this mass, I know it's orientated like this in this particular location of the country. Tell me the sort of figures I'm going to get to run and operate this. So real actual costings coming back out the other side, energy use, carbon footprints, etc. So key things we need to understand. Another thing that's important to us, the ability to understand lighting for the rooms. So we can run simple lighting analysis as well. The lighter areas here are obviously showing the areas of more natural light coming into the room. Again, more natural light, less cost for actual light fittings, etc. And also, greater productivity, because again, greater natural light gives better optimisation for productivity from workers. Also, a building's position geographically and relative to other buildings as well will have a huge impact on its efficiency. Yeah, and operational running costs because of the way in which the sun tracks round. What we can start to do with our building information models as well is run this information. So we're getting a visual impact as well about how it's going to work. So here what I'm going to do is just turn the actual sun path on to here. So this is the location of the building. You can see the orientation relative to north. The image you're seeing there is actually how the sun will track across the sky during the course of an entire year. But I want to focus on a particular day for the client. So what I can do is say, right, what I'm wanting to do is do a single day study. I've already told it where the building's located, so this is just in South Yorkshire at Barnsley. I want to go from sunrise to sunset, see the entire thing, and say, OK. And what you see here is it now shows me on that particular day, so the 26th of August, that's where the sun will track across the sky from sunrise to sunset. And I can move that sun round to show me at different times of the day the effect. I can also then start to say, OK, well, how does it actually look on the building itself? That's that same day as the sun's tracking around. You can see exactly how the shadows are cast onto that building, both inside and outside. Yes, I can see it inside as well. <coughs> we can do this as many times as you like for as many rooms as you like. Once the information model's done, we're just telling it, show me what's going on. Yeah. So data management is obviously also critically important. Remember, the whole life cycle of a building Construction costs are actually minimal compared with the operational and running costs of an actual building. We often find with a traditional managed system, you know, so the classic filing system here, information is collated over many years, 
but often this can be mislaid, or at least it's difficult to relate back to the building objects themselves. Even worse though, what happens if there was a fire? What happens if there's a flood? What happens to all that data there? It's ruined or lost. Yeah. Now actually, a lot of these issues and inefficiencies come back to the original design process themselves using the traditional design method, because information is produced as simple 2D drawings relating back to maybe other specifications. As that, that gets handed on to maybe the contractor, some of that information is diluted or repeated. Yeah. And again, when it gets compassed from the contractor to yourselves as maybe building managers or owners, again, some of that information is lost. It's hard to tie back. So what we're trying to do instead is move forward and think, right, OK, well, how can we tie this information together? Well, as mentioned before, because when we're building this model and we're putting actual objects in, chairs, desks, toilets, with the information already assigned, then we can start to use that to better manage our buildings. Let's try and make a case in point. This is just a standard 2D drawing of a locker, for example. Not giving you very much, yeah, just a size. Here's the same thing in a 3D model. They'll go, okay, well, wow, it looks just the same. Yeah. Well, it does at the moment. But what I'm able to do is say, okay, well, I also want to select that model and look around it so I can visually see its size and shape and what it looks like. But more importantly than that, I want to know the information about this particular locker. Yeah. Notice reams and reams and reams of data associated with it. It's actually tied to the actual object itself. The manufacturer, the warranty information, the size, replacement cost of this thing, even hyperlinks straight to their website. Yeah. As many links as they want to every different documents. So even the information is kept updated, it's kept live because it's a live link to a website. Yeah. Because the models are in an electronic format, it means they can be accessed on the cloud. And all I mean by that is they can be accessed anywhere. Yeah. So imagine, for example, you're a building manager, and a building you're responsible for gets the window smashed late at night. Yeah, and you get the call from security, OK, this window's been damaged. Well, under the traditional way, you'd have to go out, get your coat on, might be raining outside, trips down, find out which window it is then try and go in, find the data relating to it to order a new one. But if you could be sat at home, pull up the building model on your tablet and go, right, okay, it was this window, I know it's this size, I know which manufacturer it came from, I know how much it cost, you can simply reorder it. You never even need to leave the house. Yeah. So again, just an example, this is just a building that I'm viewing online. Yeah. You don't even need any software to do this. We upload a building model to a particular site for you, let you go on and view it, and you still have the access to do the same things. We can select objects and say, tell me the properties about that particular roof, or tell me the properties about this window, or door, or wall. Yeah, it can all be accessed remotely. Yeah, could do some nice little features as well, pulling the building apart. So, like I said, it can be smartphones, tablets, laptops. You don't need to be where the building is anymore to start to actually manage the structure. OK, so at the start of the presentation, I asked you to imagine a future which would hold some significant benefits for you as clients. And I hope what I've been able to do is demonstrate that actually these things aren't really in the future. These are things that building information modelling is delivering right now. Yeah, you can make better decisions because of the information we can start to show you. You can get reduced project costs by avoiding things like clashes on site. And you can get more efficient operation and maintenance of your building by using digital information. OK, so that brings me to the end of what I wanted to show you to, uh, today, however. So myself and other members of MWA are uh, around, and we'll be happy to answer questions, show you anything, talk about any of the software I've been discussing as well. Yeah, so please feel free to come and talk to us. OK, thank you very much. <laughs>